This week in Doctor Who, pain. 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 Sorry, mate. Pain. I'm really sorry. And the stick appears. All this and more in Mad Men with a Box. If you touch him, I swear to God, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you with Alan's head. He's not gonna do that. That's hyperbole, but that's a weird example. You wanna go? I wanna go! <laughs> Get him! Get him! Get him! I love it! That's so good! Very sorry for your loss, man. It's a lovely hat. I love your shoes. It's fine. It's fine. Go! Go! Push the ball! I can't believe Chibnall blue-balled us. We were starting to like Chibnall. And then the dude just reminds us why we hate him. You disgrace Chris's everywhere. I'm ashamed to be called Chris. You know you know that episode where the Dalek, like, shoots a bunch of people? Yeah. Ah, I wish I was one of those people. <laughs> mm. Either way, so let's just get into this week in Who. This episode made everyone on Twitter just, like, hate the flux that they made no memes that we can't share. Like, yeah, that's how we, bad. Can't be funny with, we can't be funny with this, except for maybe this post that you showed us from The Telegraph. So, The Telegraph came out with this, uh, I guess you could say headline, if that's a headline these days, sh sure. Uh, how to save Doctor Who? Bring back David Tennant. Add sex, and don't put a fanboy in charge. I can agree with two of those. Yes, I can too. David Tennant needs to come... Well, he doesn't need to, but he should uh, come back. And definitely don't put a fanboy in charge of Doctor Who. Although Russell T. Davies was a fanboy, but he wasn't like the Chris Chibnall quintessential uh, fanfic writer. Yeah. That, yeah. I think it depends. Because some stuff can work if like the whoever's heading it is like a fanboy. But they also need to be good at writing. They need a. They also need to be good at like producing and stuff like that. And so, yeah, was kind of lacking um, in all everything. Of that. All <laughs> yeah, in literally. All. But sex. This isn't I, I said this before. I blame Game of Thrones for this. Everything wants to replicate Game of Thrones. Particularly, it has sex. So we got to put sex in it. Like the new It'll Amazon, the eyes, new, yeah, the new Amazon Lord of the Rings. First of all, pointless. We've already had three great films, but there's like we're gonna add nudity and sex to this. It's like it doesn't need it. Why does this need? Why, why does it need? It? It, it adds nothing. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, well, we know the Doctor has two hearts. I wonder what else he has two of <laughs> testicles. Sorry, I forgot the doctor's a woman. Ovaries. <laughs> oh, the idea of David Tennant coming back. For me, this is like the coolest thing in the world because it's like, think about this idea. A past reincarnation of the doctor comes back. Reincarnation. Incarnation of the doctor comes back. And at but this point, think about who he surrounded himself with. The people he surrounded himself with as David Tennant, um, the, they can't come back. Rose in the other universe with uh, the doppelganger. Um, then uh, Martha Jones is with uh, units, I think. But uh, she's also she's she's yes. she's fighting some Tarans with uh, Mickey Smith off <laughs> random places. I mean, she could possibly come back. But then again, Donna Noble, if she th remembers the Doctor, she dies. Uh, 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 what's his name? Um, Captain Jack. He can't come back because of uh, sexual allegation problems. So just think about. Uh, I'm not even joking. That's true. Yeah, think about that's that. true. A yeah. doctor it, comes a back, bit. and the people he surrounded himself with, 
he goes, holy shit, I'm back. I want to get the people back that I love. But he can't. And how does he deal with that? That would be an amazing series to tell. I mean, that would be a way to get George attended to come back as Jenny. Just saying. You want to bring back his wife to play his daughter? <sighs> well, I'm not the one who married him. So. Yeah. There's <laughs> a whole new meaning to the term daddy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. It's really weird considering her dad is also the doctor. So, that is true, Peter David. But I'm going to say that I completely disagree with Jimmy. If any doctor, if any doctor, you're going to reach into your past and who you're able to grab as a new incarnation, if you're going to look for an old face, the one to do it is the eighth doctor. He deserves it. <laughs> After I all mean, the time yes, he's been yes. screwed over. Paul McGann he, would be amazing, but he's too old. You're you're really ageist in your picks. No, We've we discussed this before. Blocked and reported. <laughs> he's literally too old to come back as the doctor when he first showed up. Oh, are you mean like doing like the David Tennant, like regenerating into Yes, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, then that's fine. My bad. I was I, I misunderstood you. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I don't mean bring back a past doctor to play the classic version of themselves. No. If they're going to be a new doctor with an old face, that's the one to do it. The 10th doctor, I he had a great time, and people love him. I don't think he needs to come back. No, he doesn't need to. But, hey, the ratings want him to. <laughs> the, the ratings need it. <laughs> yes. Also, that brings us one more thing we could show. Um, there is this very, very, very cool video that I watch probably like twice a week. Uh, it is some guy made a concept art uh, trailer for the Eighth Doctor, and it is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I like it. It just, I don't know that f the first, like few, the first almost minute of it doesn't feel very Doctor Who-ish. I know. It's like a whole aesthetic. Yeah. It's, I, it's, it, if you read the ending, it said the time war. And I was yeah. like, this is like his darkest time. So yeah. I thought it fit so, perfectly. You know, um, <clears throat> pardon me. If they were going to do like a spin-off series, uh, Eighth Doctor Adventures. I can see it working for that because it's not technically Doctor Who because it's its own separate thing. It's still the Doctor, but it's not in the mainline series. Yeah. Kind of like how S the Sarah Jane Adventures was very... Okay, this is obviously like similar to New Who kind of like opening, but it's in her own style. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. I mean, I could see it as a spin-off, but if it was like a main one, it's just it, that first almost minute just feels so out of place as like a Doctor Who opening. I'm just so used to this the time vortex and all that. Me too. I know. I was thinking just a little bit there, just a little more vortex. Yeah, a little less like this is doomed. like a this is like a totally different concept. Like it's a concept idea, and I thought, you know what, to shake it up a bit, this is fucking rad, man. I love I love that because you got to feel like you're on a different planet, like isolated in that just that opening. I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. That's my favorite opening yeah. of any Doctor Who. I don't even care. It's not even real. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> we should talk about the ratings 
for this last episode of Flux. Do you have them for us, Jimmy? Oh, yes, I do. What? What's what's happened this time with the ratings? I don't think they've improved. Well, um... <laughs> oh, no. 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 Uh, they dropped over a million. <laughs> well, actually, sorry. No, they didn't. They dropped 300,000. The million, they don't have consolidated yet. Um... So I'm pretty sure right here is the lowest Doctor Who episode ever watched. Even Classic Who. It's not good. I think the lowest one ever was Peter Capaldi at 3.6 something. Um, I think this could be the yeah. lowest. I think a lot of people would have been mixed on five, hence why. Because then you had that good episode with four. And then you could see by the ratings, it went up a bit mm -hmm. because I think four piqued everyone's interest. So, okay, now we're good. Now it's, it's, it's getting good. Okay, it's getting good. But then five happened. And I think, yeah. I think everyone's like, nah, nah they, it's just gone back to normal, back to the Chibnall normal. You know, it's actually normal. Normal. Just, I should have saw this, no, I have saw this coming. I've been, I hated Chris Chibnall for a while. I he tricked us. Coming. He tricked us with the first two episodes. Flux you, man. Flux you. Oh, man. I, so, yeah, that's that's the ratings. Uh, lowest of all time. I believe it could be wrong, but I believe it's the lowest of all time. Um, Jimmy. Ever. I, I got to say, Chris and I did try to warn you about Flux. How, oh, he, it's looking good, but that's what he how he wants it to look. He's like oh, he's 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 like a man in a van. He's giving you out candy. Hey, we, we can trust this guy. He's giving me free candy. But all what he wants to do is just you right in the ass. Exactly. <laughs> you want to shove that candy candy can up your ass. I think now <laughs> is a good time to discuss the episode. And as he is the one who has expressed the most disappointment, I think it, it, the first initial thoughts belong to the main man jimmy which is weird you've been if you've been the most positive about flocks throughout so all these positive. videos even when me and pixel didn't like episodes or thought we were mixed you loved them so finale still loving it <laughs> it's so bad that it makes me rethink the previous episodes Cause like, oh, we're leading. We're gonna, we're gonna tell you about this. And we're gonna tell you about that. We're, oh, we're almost at the finale. Things are about to wrap up. Psych. We're, we're gonna wrap them up in the worst way possible. I don't know what happened in this episode, and I was paying attention the whole time. <laughs> I and I watch Christopher Nolan movies on the regular and understand them quite well. <laughs> you think you understand them? I watch David Lynch stuff, and that's that's more <laughs> I can comprehend that much better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this one had a couple of parts. Um, remember how we were like talking up Craig Parkinson as like an amazing actor, and he just imbues evil. Yep, could he be the master? I even said that because I thought. Sa so this Sasha's master was going to be in here. No, apparently not, because for some reason, I read it off like the the wiki, but it combined the 2022 specials with Flux, and he's going to be in the specials. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm guessing he's not in Flux. He's going to be in the specials because well, they allude they allude to it to yes, uh, they do. Their, their master. But here's a couple things. Um, how does Jody Whitaker's Sonic Screwdriver like just? Freeze Craig Parkinson's Grand Serpent. You know, she like did like the whole Uno reverse card. Of, ah, Sonic. And he goes, Oh, shit, I can't move. I would say it, using the machine, but she doesn't. Yeah. She just straights up like, Oh, you're a, this kind of being and freezes him. D I thought it, she was scanning him at that moment. I thought she used something else to freeze him. Uh, no, she uses nah, because she doesn't. She doesn't imprison him until she frees the other Jody. It's like, hey, you, hey, you're going to be trapped in your own machine for a while. Hope you like it. It's Let's so just say, bad. what a waste of the Grand Serpent. 
Yeah. No, no, waste. no. What a huge fucking waste of Craig Parkinson. Even if this character was stupid, what happened with his character in the past two episodes? Fucking nothing. Fucking nothing. Nothing. They only just imply why he's on Earth. It's like, I need oh, to chase you're this. Uh, you, yeah. you, you were exiled or you ran away. And like I thought that was going to be a callback to Vinda exposing him or trying to expose him. But then no, he doesn't uh, even he nope. doesn't even remember Vinda. Which I feel like okay, that would make sense to his character cuz he only cares about himself, but if the implication is he is in exile and it's possibly because of that, he would remember him because he is the cause of his downfall. I was a ruler. I yeah. ruled justly. That's exactly what the people in power think. Oh. But also, the death of Eustatius Jericho. Unnecessary. Exactly! Like, I felt although, sad although, that he died, but it was so unnecessary. It was, but, it was the best part of the episode because his final lines were actually some of the best of this whole series, where all he says was just, What an adventure. Okay. This is what this is about, man. Then yes. he has his reaction. Oh, I got some tears in my eyes. Okay, that's all. They <laughs> were together for two for like years. years. Yeah. And and she goes, uh next. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, you yeah, you and, think they would have created and, a bond and, during that time. Yeah, and also just here's Kate. I'm leading the resistance. Oh my. What resistance? Nobody's there. What? No humans. You, you, you and one person who who rats you out anyway and gets killed. Yep. Yeah, I, I was confused by that too. Why was she literally? There's so many things in this episode, and I'm just confused on why they were there in the first place. Yeah, we have established this multiple times. Chris Chibnall can have interesting ideas, and he can execute. Some of those ideas go, going forward, but he cannot tie them together to save his life. No. Also, another waste of, of great villains, Azure and Swarm. Oh, what a waste. <laughs> and they get what they want in the end. How is that yeah. punishment? It's just like, because time or their savior, suddenly time has a, has a, a physical body you can take. Okay, whatever. Like, it's just like, you failed, the flux didn't destroy everything, and I'm going, what is a fitting punishment for you for your fail failure, even if you gave me the Doctor, and it disintegrates them, but it's always like, ascension, because that's what they want. They want the destruction of, like, everything. Yep. How is that a punishment? They got what they wanted. They died. But it would have been much more fitting. It's just like, this is your punishment. You get to live. You have to live forever everything else will will reach its end it will die you get you have to live forever yeah. and also you i'm removing your abilities to kill anything so you can't kill anything now the thing that you want you want to you want everything to end you can't do that that is your punishment you live forever also that you can't the, time is a living entity that defeats yeah. the purpose of se season one's finale if it was a living entity, you think a human would be able to c control that just by looking at it? Uh, that's a little messy. It's all messy. There's, there's no reason to act like we need to comprehend any of this. It's a big uh. cluster flux. Here, I'll, here <laughs> I'll, I'll show you what would happen if, at the time, time was a living entity. Rose stares at time. Time. No. Uh, End no. of season. You guys die. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, okay, but she didn't she stare into the heart of the time vortex? Wasn't that the uh, heart of the TARDIS? Yeah, yeah, well, heart of the TARDIS time. through the time vortex. That's, that's still not connected. Time that's, itself. Yeah, that's still connected to time though, because then yeah. she then she implants Bad Wolf throughout various points in time yes. to lead to her now currently as the Bad Wolf entity. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's weird that it's like let's give time a pers uh, personification. I mean, we technically already have some with like with some of the Eternals. There's like, oh, this one is time. This one is death. But they don't. They're not literally them. They're just like 
kind of avatars. I, I identify as time. I identify as time. <laughs> my, my, my pronouns are past, present. Past, <laughs> but no, like, yeah, that was a, a mess. Also, Carvinista, you were my companion, weren't you? Nothing follows from that. Well, well because but why is he? Because but he there, has there's, there was no, there, there's also no conclusion. Because okay, you can ha- keep the whole. He can't say anything because they reveal he can't say anything about their time together because it would kill him. Because they put something in him that would kill him if he talks about his time in the division with the doctor, and that he felt a, he felt abandoned by the doctor. Mm-hmm. There's no resolution to that. He just goes off with Bell and Vinda. But there's, here's there's the thing. No, there's no like doctor like being like sorry that because it's always like it's a common thing the doc the c- companions will always leave either it's by choice or the doctor has to leave them there or other circumstances. She there is no like the doctor apologizing for like doing something mm. like that. Nothing except just, for oh, he Yaz. Was a companion. Except for Yaz, that you know, that's the only thing that is like I need to be more open with you, Yaz. I've been hiding everything from you. I that's need it. To get more open. Remember now let's do you, do you, they should have used Carvinista as like a kind of a crux to lead to that by re- resolving that and then it leads to the whole the doctor deciding she wants to be more open with Yaz but they don't do that so you you know Yaz uh it, 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 I don't know if either of you caught it but during that entire scene everybody could see what they were going for right stare 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 oh this is just what I want to hear. They were gonna oh. kiss. And then Dan comes in. Oh, 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 what was that? Yeah. Oh, an- another, another no resolution. Him and Diane. She just decides. No. Sorry, Dan. Oh, yeah. Oh. Diane. Oh, by the way, uh, I got reservations for us. Yeah. Uh, how about we didn't? How about oh. we don't? So yeah, it I just, it I just my went fault. on this giant fucking adventure just to save you. And at the end, Nothing. when you go, oh, you saved me, you get turned off because I was a little bit late trying to save you. Yeah, that so, wasn't in his. It wasn't in his control. He did not know you were taken until like what the third episode, which also leads to me to ask: unless Swarm can see into the future, or Swarm or Azor can see into the future, why did they kidnap Diane? Because at that point, Dan was not a companion. To the yeah. doctor, the doctor Take only just m- just meets Dan at the end of the first episode. So, so why uh, would they kidnap Diane? They would only do that because if only if Dan was already an established companion to use against him. Yeah, what the? Him. F- no, my God. What the? Fuck? It's only because the plot demanded it. Because yep. then it leads to Vinda, and then I've them escaping, the and the, the passenger. Fucking yeah. chin ball. I think the only thing that really got an so- actual resolution was just. Bell and Vinda, they finally got together. Problem is, I don't care. <laughs> I did. I actually, exactly. I actually liked it. I was... did not care about either of those characters, I... so I don't care that they finally got together. I cannot tell you how glad, how glad I am that the Doctor is not their daughter. <laughs> well, we don't know. They didn't say. No, we're going to leave it. They're gone. They're done. So Forever. let's let's let's. So we 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 decided that this episode is shit. Hey, I hey, the hey. one last thing I hey. want to say about this: when she gets the fog watch, and she yeah. she goes, she did. She basically almost killed people to figure out her past and get this watch. Yep. And then when she gets it, she goes, "All no. right, hide it from me." Unless I really want it. And then just lets it go. Like, what? what the f- then just put it down in a drawer. The thing yeah. is, so, so that's, that scene would work if we had build up to the fact that it doesn't, her time as a timeless child does not matter. Who she is right now is more important, which, which they tried to do in the timeless child when she meets like yep. that, the matrix representation of like, the Ruth Doctor, the fugitive, which is like, was like, I can't remember the entire the, the entire line. But it's like, have you ever let your past really dictate who you are now? And she's like, oh, that sounds like me. But like, yeah. there should have been something added to that. Something like, I know you should. There should have been some someone someone else with her 
in like the Azure Swarm, the, the, the division parts. Someone to be the kind of the counter and be like, it doesn't matter. No, you're the, what are you? You're, you're the doctor. Like you are the doctor. That's all that matters. You're not the ti- you're not this timeless child. You're not the you're not this division agent. You are the doctor. Like it always it reminds me of the the day of the doctor when the when are Clara you asked talk shit about that. No, I'm not talking shit about it. It reminds me of when not. Clara asked Clara asked them, "Why did you call yourself the doctor?" And they were all talking about the oath that they made, and she's like when they decide, okay, we're going to just destroy, all three of us are going to destroy Gallifrey because that's the only choice we have. And she's like, look at the three of you, the warrior, the hero, and you, and, you know, pointing at the 11th Doctor. He's like, well, what am I? He's like, well, we don't need warriors. Anyone can be a hero. But you, like, you're the Doctor. You already know this. You're the Doctor. That's all that matters. And like, there should have been something like that that would then make sense. You know what? Sucks. To her deciding, I don't need this. My memories is the timeless child because I'm the doctor. That's all that matters. That's all I've ever known. That's all I ever need. Do you, do you know what, what? What? Hold on, hold on. Do, do you know what sucks about this? Even like the whole timeless child thing. Yeah. She's not even a time lord anymore. Yeah, not really. No, it's just a random species of humanoid looking person that had regeneration powers yep. and then get brought to Gallifrey and then she creates through experimentation from uh, uh, her mom Mommy. Um, she, then, then the mother creates the t- actual time lords so and she's not even a that, time lord that, that makes it even yep. more confusing when you come to River She's a, right. she's yeah. she's she's half time lord because of she was conceived in the time vortex. The time vortex has timeless child powers. Yeah. Like what? Can and it also you know make yeah, timeless no, it, it, people like the timeless child? Like it, it doesn't you know make what, sense. You want to know what I heard? Mess. I heard that after uh, the timeless child was aired, uh, like a week after Stephen Moffat and. Russell T. Davies both went into the BBC office basically yelling at him saying, why the fuck did you let him do this? <laughs> like, he just destroyed all of canon, everything we just worked on. Um, and then uh, from what I heard is that's when the negotiation started for Russell T. Davies to come back. Yeah, I, I haven't heard about any of that. I don't know if it's true. I'm not going to say it is. I'm not going to say it is. It'd be funny. It'd be but- funny if that was true. Oh, it'd be so great. The two of them just got out of the... What the it, hell? Were you watching the show? The, the, the things that we've been working on? Your main bread and butter right now? Really? Really? It's it's, it's like when, when Nick Spencer took over Spider-Man and he was just... His first arc was entirely a jab at Dan, Dan Slott. What if we split them together? Uh, split them apart? It's like one could be Spider-Man, one could be Peter Parker. That works out be- great for both of them. No, it doesn't. They need to be together. You cannot yeah. have. You, you need the great power and the great responsibility together. You can't have, you know, Peter Parker without Spider Man. You can't have Spider Man without Peter Parker. Listen, listen. Writers can fluctuate, <laughs> fluctuate. But Chibnall is a. He always promises to suck. At one point, <laughs> one way or another, he always will not disappoint in completely sucking and failing you. <laughs> not disappoint in disappointing you. <laughs> Personally, I'm going to go ahead and say, because I didn't get to really segment this, I think this episode actually had quite a few good moments, too, with, like, uh, what's his name? The, w- Williamson. Uh, he, he, the I Joseph Williamson, him, yeah. uh, With his tunnels, I found that very cool and... Oh, look at this, Mole Man. You helped save the day. I-, I like that a little bit. And then the doctor interacting with herself. That being said, there's just so much about this episode that does not work. And all it's leading up to is nothing. The flux was nothing. The Earth, is it? Is it the only thing remaining in the universe? Who knows? Dog yeah, they don't even Lawrence. resolve. They don't even resolve that. I thought they were going to use because remember they make a yeah, point the of saying still the- there. But the thing is, they make a point of saying, like, in the division ship, uh, Tecteun kept, like, 
like fragments or aspects of the of the, the, the universe to just keep with her. I thought the yeah. Doctor was going to use that as like to do like like another of like the Pandorica. Like remember the Pandorica had the atoms of the original universe, and the Doctor flew into the exploding TARDIS so he could distribute it across all of time and restart the universe. I yep. thought the Doctor was going to do something like that, but no, nope. apparently not. You, apparently you Earth is the only only viable I, I know, planet now. I know exactly how Chris Chibnall writes. I know exactly how he writes. He writes one episode after another, but based off of his memory, he doesn't go back to check what he <laughs> fucking wrote. Yeah. Perfect. No. That's it. That's it. That's great. Right, he, 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 is the, uh, he is the clear so example my, of someone needing a proofreader. My rating for this episode, I believe last week's was a 6.5. I'm keeping it at a 6.5. Oh, you are. No, I'm, no, I'm flattening it. Six. Just, just a six. Because of how much of it just doesn't make sense, it's still somewhat Doctor Who, and it has a few moments in there that you can enjoy. Uh, but other than that, you're left with an absolute mess. That uh, it started with a mess, but it was an intriguing mess, and now the mess is just left all over. You have the answers as to who spilled the milk, the ketchup, and all this into this disgusting pile ahead of you and you're left feeling empty uh but overall for the flux no i'm keeping it at a six uh, because of it as a whole there's so there are good episodes in there but the promise isn't put it isn't fully pushed through the promise is broken at the halfway mark, episode three, that's when it really started going downhill. Angels picked up a little, but then dip, dip. Like I said earlier, I think I'm going to have to rethink the overall thing, overall story, because this last this episode sucked balls. I give this episode three, a three out of ten. Like, I, I can't see this getting any higher than that. And I give it a three out of ten because there was some good moments in it. Jericho's final words, uh, Craig Park, Craig Parkinson just being Craig Parkinson. Um, saw Kate Stewart, but nothing to do with her story. Just seeing her. Oh, and the division stuff I thought was kind of cool. I like I like the idea of time being like an embodiment, but it doesn't work in Doctor Who. But I like the idea of it. Yeah, so that's why I give it a three, maybe even two point five. But the single uh, episode. I'm sorry. This the overall flux. I give it um, because like how bad this episode didn't do anything. It's probably gonna be a four point five to five. Like I, I, yes, Village of the Angels is definitely great, but because they set up so much and then nothing, it's like watching Dune halfway through and then just stopping. Yeah, this episode, man. There's some little bits that it's like, okay, I like that, but it's a huge mess. I put it in that while it does end things, it ends them in the most lackluster way. And I have, I'm just questioning all of it. And ah, this, and I've, I said this in our group chat because I'd, Jimmy was only the only one out of all of us that would rewatch an episode. Um, I don't know if Pixel did, but I know I only just watched them once. I just only need to watch them once. That's fine. This one, because when I first watched it, I was like, okay, it was okay. I might give this a six. Then I, no, I started thinking about it. I'm going to rewatch this to get a clearer thought. Having rewatched it, I'm like, yeah, I, now I'm now noticing so much that is wrong with this. This is not okay. The only this thing is that the was the only okay, episode I didn't rewatch. Yeah, the o the only thing that it was okay is that it actually ended the flux story. That was one of my main concerns: is that the flux story was just going to continue to the 2022 specials. Mm -hmm. No, despite how bad it ended, it it ended the flux story. So for the episode itself, I would give this a. Oof. I'm leaning towards yeah, like a a four out of ten for this okay. for this episode. It yeah, is the worst. 
it is the worst episode of this season. Probably of almost almost tied with the timeless trial, but the timeless trial oh. was just is just so oh. it was just co- was just history ruining. That's the only. I thing was that literally just gonna say at least it's not the timeless child, which is why it's not always one yeah. or two. Maybe I was uh, have, having what after watching this episode twice, I was like maybe I was too harsh on Once Upon a Time. <laughs> yeah, you were because it was actually a good episode. No, I still think it was not a good. It was a me- it was a mixed mess of an episode. I really, like, yeah. I don't know why. I just liked it. Four out of ten for the uh, for the episode for the series. The thing is, it is the epitome of mixed, in my opinion. We had three good episodes, then three mixed to bad episodes, and it was almost like every other episode. Yeah, it started. It's, it went good, good, mixed, really good, mixed, bad. So I'm gonna also give it a f- i i think giving it a four is just too high given oh. of what we got out of this last episode the last episode really dictates the entire series it's the conclusion of it i'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 10 for the entire series yeah so we're pretty much matched aren't we huh so, yeah so i'm going to i'm going to go ahead and say this i probably should have rewatched it uh, I didn't, so <laughs> I I am in that initial. It was okay. I, so that's probably why I'm not. I didn't go to. Okay, I'm sitting down. I'm taking notes like I do for Twin Peaks on another channel. Uh, I I take notes of that. I didn't take notes here. I just sat back, relaxed, watched Doctor Who how I normally do, and I was just okay. It's Chibnall. Okay. 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 And if I watched it again, probably wouldn't. It wasn't the Timeless Child though, and I think that might be the main difference. Episode five offended me. It offended me because of how much was tied into the Timeless Child. This one, even though she gets the fob watch and she's teased, oh look at this broken down house we're going to use to tear you apart. It wasn't actually delving into that, so I'm not as triggered to that. If I could look back, because for some reason, I'm struggling to actually go into the bottom five for my rankings. Uh, I, I think I would rate this episode. Uh, I, I'd keep it at a like a six from right now. If I watched it again, I probably would notice just how horrible it was. But I, I am going to adjust the series marker to a five. And that's that. Uh, that's yeah, so that's that's what we got for Doctor Who Flux. This is the final episode of Flux, which means what are we doing next week? Well, 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 I am glad you mentioned that, Jimmy, because we have thought about this. Our, we have de- uh, just delved into uh, some ideas, and next week you can look be looking forward to the first of the Ninth Doctor's new audio adventures. And that's going to be our review. Ravagers. Yeah, you see him dancing. I know what I'll Jimmy like dancing. Doing until then. <laughs> I, I've literally, I, I've literally listened to it already. Um, and it is a little confusing to start, but once you get confusing. into it, it, it literally feels like you got your best friend back. Like that's how good this is. It, it, it feels like you got your best friend back. And I'm really excited for you guys to hear it because it's Christopher Eccleston, man. It's, it's the doctor. Like I just, if you got, I got my, I got, I got my doctor back and it's, oh, it's nice. So that's what we got next week. Look forward yep. to it. Also, we, we just want to ask you to like, comment and subscribe. We will be seeing you next time. So long. <laughs> <laughs>